Assalamu alaikum. In the previous video, we talked about ineffective study techniques and why are they ineffective. Now we go on to the solution. Which techniques should we be using? We should be using effective study techniques, and they are enlisted here, which include active recall, spaced repetition, elaboration, interleaving, and dual coding. We will be taking each of them one by one, but in this video, we'll be dis discussing about active recall. So what is active recall? We discussed this diagram in the previous video, but I'll reiterate here about neurons. They become consolidated when they fire again. Like anything, it improves with practice. Whenever you fire a neuron again, it becomes stronger and quicker to fire. So. The thing we have to be wary about and be careful about is to fire neurons as many times as possible before the test day. So when a person is rereading, they're firing this neuron again and again and it encodes the memory into the brain. But normally people just stop here and they don't fire the retrieval neuron. And they just fire it once on test day, making just a single connection and a very weak retrieval. So what we have to do? After we've encoded the memory in the part of our brain, we have to try to fire the retrieval neuron. We have to try to retrieve the memory as many times as possible before taking the test. If we fire it maybe five times before taking a test, on test day it would be the sixth time firing this and it would fire quicker and you would retrieve more of the memory you have and score better. The connections would become stronger and the retrieval would become quicker. So this is basically what active recall is. To fire this green pathway before taking the test. We reiterate here what is active recall, the green pathway. So how do you do it? You read a topic from a book and rather than just rereading it again, you close that book right there and sketch and write down on a blank piece of paper whatever you have learned. What else you can do is you can do tests of that topic, you can do flashcards of that topic, uh, and something else you can do is make synthesis questions. What are synthesis questions? You read, re you read something from a book, a page from a book, and you understand the concept there and then. And the next time you have to revise that topic, you don't reread it again. The first time you read, the first time you're reading topic, you take out the important points and make questions uh, from that page and put the questions aside in another in a, in another word document or wherever you'd like. So the next time you're going to revise that, you don't open the book. Rather, you go for the questions. You try to do that. You try to do those questions, and try to recall what you've learned and wherever you get stuck you open the book and look at the answer another way for active recall is maybe you get a friend and tell him him to ask you questions about that topic which you've learned and you do back the same uh, one of the pitfalls of active recall is people just recalling words and definition, the things about rot memorization. Rather, you should first understand the concept and try to recall the concept rather than just recalling words and definitions. And first, when you start doing active recall, it would feel difficult because learning is difficult and uh, according to research also Cognitive research is that learning takes effort. If it's feeling difficult for you, it means that it's working. It means you're learning stuff, the memory's getting the memory's getting encoded, and the retrieval neuron, the green pathway is firing and it's become stronger. So it would be difficult at start, but when you keep on doing active recall, it will become easier and an effective way for you to learn all the medical stuff. Uh, about recalling from questions, if you are not recalling an answer, you try to recall that as much as you can. And then you look at the book. 
you shouldn't look at the book the first time say look at a question and say oh i don't get it and just look at the book that won't help when you try to put effort and try to recall that and after that you look at the book the memory would get very consolidated and get encoded in a very good way so this is about active recall so we'll try to give an example about active recall uh, firstly we'll go through this paragraph uh, paragraph about respiratory physiology and then we'll give examples how could you use active recall in this so I'll read it along surface tension of alveoli the small size of alveoli presents a special problem in keeping them open this problem can be explained as follows alveoli are lined with the film of fluid the attractive forces between adjacent molecules of liquid are stronger than the attractive forces between molecules of liquid and molecules of gas in the alveoli, which creates surface tension. As the molecules of liquid are drawn together by attractive forces, the surface area becomes as small as possible, forming a sphere like soap bubbles blown at the end of a tube. The surface tension generates a pressure that tends to collapse the sphere. The pressure generated by such a sphere is given by the law of Laplace, P is equal to 2T over R, where P is the collapsing pressure, P is the surface tension, R, and R is the radius of the alveoli. The law of Laplace states that the pressure tending to collapse an alveolus is directly proportional to the surface tension generated by the molecule of liquid lining the alveolus and inversely proportional to the alveolar radius. Because of the inverse relationship with the radius, a large alveolus will have a low collapsing pressure and therefore will require only minimal pressure to keep it open. On the other hand, a small alveolus will have a high collapsing pressure and require more pressure to keep it open. The small alveoli are not ideal because of the tendency to collapse, yet from the standpoint of gas exchange, alveoli need to be as small as possible to increase the total surface area relative to the volume. This fundamental conflict is solved by surfactant. Uh, you can pause the video if you haven't gone through it yet. So, for example, we, got, we have gone through a paragraph and we have understood it properly and gotten the concept. So the next time we're going to go revise it, we're not going to reread it. Because the first time when we do it, we made questions. This is an example of active recall. We made three questions. And when we came back to revise the paragraph, what we did is we went for questions and tried to remember the answers. So the first question is how is surface tension in alveoli generated? We think and we get the answer, yeah, by water molecules lining the alveolus. That is how the surface tension is generated. We go to the next question. What is the Laplace law? For example, we don't, we don't know the answer to this. We don't remember it. We try to remember, try to remember. We still, didn't, we still don't get it. We go back to the source material. We look at it. The Laplace law is P is equal to 2T over R. So now when we do this, this would get really good encoding into our memory. We won't forget it again. And similarly, we go over the third question, how does the radius of the alveoli affect the surface tension? The radius is inversely proportional. So this was all about active recall. Thank you very much.